All right, I have a bit of a headache going on right now, but we're talking about my favorite topic ever. And that topic is content creation. When we're talking about content creation and Notion on the same day, it is a good day in my books, okay? You've heard the spiel a million times. All of us are busy. We're content creators, we're working nine to five jobs, some of us are parenting, some of us are still in school studying. Keeping track of all of that can be just a complete nightmare to say the least. So today I'm just gonna walk you guys through my Notion board and show you how to be a more effective content creator with the limited time that you've got. I'm sorry, I believe my computer was possessed one moment. Hey, QuickTime, can you stop showing me my face? Thank you. All right, so let's start out in the content database because this is where the magic really happens. This content database is where all of my content ends up living at some point. Let me just take you through the anatomy of it a little bit by starting out in the table of contents. This is something that you can actually have Notion put together for you. And all you do is you hit enter, find a little blank space. I'll write your name. Shout out to my Swifties, am I right? You hit backslash and then you type in table. Usually you're gonna go down to advanced blocks and that is gonna be table of contents. And the way that this works is every time you have a header on your page, it's going to add it automatically to the table of contents, which is a pretty cool feature. So this is what I use when I'm navigating my content database on my phone. Notion on phones notoriously doesn't navigate very well. So this is just a nice way to get to where I need to go on this absolute mega page really quickly, because as I mentioned, this is a video for busy content creators. Okay, we don't have time to scroll all day. All right, but in all seriousness, we're gonna start out with the quick ideas section. These two buttons are for my most common content ideas that pop into my head throughout the day. And those are new video, which are for new YouTube videos, and new vertical, which is for primarily TikTok content. I make all of my content to be TikTok first. I would like to have the bandwidth someday to create stuff that is specifically for the Reels algorithm, specifically for the YouTube Shorts algorithm, but I am just not there yet. So what I do is we'll create a new video idea right now, actually. I hit new video and it's going to take me to a blank page in my content hub. Then I can use one of these templates that I've put together to basically pick what type of video it's gonna be. So if it's a YouTube video, sit down like this, I would click YouTube. If it's a vlog, I have a slightly different template for that. Vertical content, podcast, and written post. Now you might see podcast and you're like, Julia, you don't have a podcast. Uh, that is correct. <laughs> but sometimes I get these longer form ideas. I do want to create a podcast someday. So having a place to sort of capture those ideas is really beneficial. And sometimes I dive in there too, and I can break those bigger conversation ideas into smaller video types. I don't know why I still keep it, but it's been working for me so far. So let's click YouTube and it's going to take a quick second, but this is what it generates. Then if I have a split second, I will fill in a little info. So this is going to be my July reset video. Now what you're going to do is goal for the video, which I got these from a wonderful content creator named Katie Steckley. And I basically break my content out into different types. So there's help content, hub content, and hero content. This I would say is probably between helpful and personal, probably a little more personal. So I'm just going to categorize it as that. Now, the reason I even do this in the first place is because it helps me think about how my content balances. Am I posting a lot of informative stuff? Am I really giving you guys a lens into what I'm doing every day? I think balancing those is where you get a really robust and well put together channel. And that has been one of my big goals for the year. So that's why I kind of split my content out in this way. Then I also pick which of my content pillars it falls under. So this one is probably gonna go under self-improvement and lifestyle, since those are the areas that I think this video falls most into. Then I'll pick a date to film it, probably somewhere towards the end of the month. I think the last Friday would be perfect. And then I'm gonna post it sometime in early July. So let's say July 3rd. And once I have those two dates filled in, it's gonna tell me how many days I have until the video is due. So for this one, I have 13 days to prepare the video. That should be plenty of time, but in case it's not, I can always go in, tweak, adjust, do what I need to do. Then I have my script link, which this is not generated yet. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into this shortcut, which actually is a shortcut to create a new Google Docs, which is where I write my scripts for my YouTube videos in. This is actually ultra cool because if you don't want to do it via shortcut, you can actually just type in docs.new. And if you click that, it is a shortcut to create a new Google Doc. So that is just a really fun little life hack that I found. And then once I have that, I'll take the script link that it generates, plop it into this section, and I can come back and forth once I know that's a video I really wanna pursue. The rest of these sections are not quite as relevant. I have a planning section where I can jot down B-roll, video title ideas, tags, keywords, and thumbnail ideas. So usually what I'll do is I'll just pop in the title of the video that I'm thinking of making, into the YouTube search and pull a couple of thumbnail ideas from there to think about and reference while I'm creating my own. I also have a checklist. I am dotting all my I's and crossing all my T's while making my videos and helps me keep on track too because sometimes I don't have the time to do every single cut of my video editing process, for example. But if I do one part on one day, I can pick up easily the next day and it creates this sort of mental flow that really works for me. And then the last part is something that I do a week after publishing all of my videos. I have some hidden properties here, but when I pick which day the video is gonna go live, I pick the date that is exactly one week from there, and it is going to set it up as a reminder in my Notion. So I don't even need to think about it. It's just going to tell me in a week, hey, pop into your YouTube studio, let's see how this video is doing. And from there, I can write down how are the views on the video? Is it better than usual? Is it worse than usual? And I can kind of learn on a video by video basis what I'm doing right and what I can use some growth on when creating my content. The final thing that I wanna leave you guys with for my YouTube content is the status column. So as I work through a video, it goes through a couple of different phases. It starts out as an idea, always, that's a given. But as it goes through the process, it has multiple phases. TTH is short for title, thumbnail, and hook. And that is what I use to sort of qualify if the video is gonna be good enough to make it into a main channel video. Then I go into scripting mode, that puts it into my scripting list. If it's a video that needs to be filmed, I move it to the filming list and I'll come back and do some work on what I want to title it, what I want the thumbnail to look like, all that jazz once I get around to it. All right, so coming back to the content page, I wanna show you guys how I actually plan out my content. So the ready to film section is a mix of my TikTok and my YouTube content that needs to get filmed at some point. I specifically have this filtered so that it's only showing me videos that are ready to film, but have not been assigned a video filming day. One of the things I really like about laying it out this way is that I can click and drag these right into the database where they need to go. So for example, I have this YouTube video right here. I can just click and drag this onto the calendar and it's going to assign the filming date to whatever day I have dropped it into, which is so cool, I think. I absolutely love how simple that is. And actually, this would be a great video, I think, to film on a Friday, just because I need to get up early for it. So I think maybe the second week of July, yeah, that could be actually quite a good time to film that. Super cool, love that. In this column too, I have analysis, which are my videos that I need to do research on or just still have a little bit of tinkering to do. I have the planning column, which are videos that I am scripting right now and then ready to film. We just went through that one, so we're good there. The biggest part of my page here is the schedule. This schedule has three different tabs. The film tab, which is my filming calendar. It shows me what day I need to film different pieces of content. The post page, which is when different pieces of content are supposed to go live. And then the reporting one, which I don't really use that much, but it lets me know when I have reporting days coming up for my videos and I can go in, grab insights, or even go to previous videos more quickly and see how they performed in relation to my latest content. Okay, cool, we're gonna scroll down a little further to tools. My toolkit is probably one of my favorite pieces of my content dashboard because it is just this one-stop shop 
to capture everything that I'm thinking about. I do have these backed up onto Google Drive just so we're clear, but so for example, I have my profile pics. There's my personal channel one. There's my Queen Epona channel one. I have my fonts database, which is where I keep all of the cute little fonts that I use in my YouTube videos. I love playing around with fonts, so this always reminds me to get creative when I'm in editing mode. My brand strategy page, which is honestly a bit of a work in progress. I do have things in here like target audience, best practices, video content, and I have a social media audit that I had done. This is a really great checkpoint whenever I get stuck on my content. It was definitely a bit of an investment. I think it was a hundred and something dollars. I do find myself coming back to it and it's just a really great guide to what I should be doing at any given point. The last part of this is my content workflow, which is just a different visual to the one that you saw in my previous page. This helps me get a better idea of my bandwidth, what I'm using, how I get through my different content workflows, and obviously this is going to be really, really handy when I get to the point where I have staff or a video editor or somebody helping me out with my content process. It's pretty much all me. I don't have anyone that is working for me at the moment, so this is a great way to feel like I have a personal assistant or feel like I have some semblance of what is going on in my busy life. The next section is the inspiration tab and I absolutely love this one as well. There are certain creators that just have such great thumbnails and I really want to emulate the elements of their thumbnails that I like in my own while still keeping a unique style and kind of feeling like I can be creative with how those thumbnails look on my channel. I have them categorized by content type as well, so I have a mix of gaming creators, commentary creators, chatty creators, chatty slash sit down video creators that I put into this database just when I am absolutely stuck to see what good work looks like and even emulate some of that in my own thumbnails. My workflow page is a little empty right now. I think I'm gonna move that section from my brand strategy guide into this so it's just separated a little cleaner, but I haven't fully figured this one out yet. And the last page in this database is my goals page. I really wanna flesh this out a little bit more, but I just haven't gotten around to it. So I have my YouTube goals, my TikTok goals, Anything that is measurable and I can actually make a tangible difference on goes into this database. Because again, while I do have sub and follower goals in here, I'm trying to focus on stuff that's more in my control lately, just because it makes me a better content creator and it makes me less likely to compare myself to others so that I actually make things that make me happy. <laughs> It's a lot of creating, a lot of making. Then I have some quick links to each of my socials over here, as well as unique pages for each one of them. Um, we won't go into every single one because a lot of them are pretty much the same template, but just for their respective platforms. But I will show you guys my YouTube one because this is the one that I use the most. So this teeny column off to the side are either my film, post, or report sections. Now, this is just a singular view of what was on my calendar on the other page. This is where I go if I absolutely need to quickly find something that I'm recently working on. This first tab are my ideas. This is where I go to the most when it comes comes time to create content. The second part is my board, which this is just every video that is somewhere in the progress. This is basically a click and drag board where I can move stuff around based on where it is in the editing process. My filming calendar again, because I need to see when I'm actually working on a lot of this stuff. My posting calendar that also shows me how many days I have left to finish certain pieces of content. Obviously the ones that are in the negatives, those are already, whoop, they're done. They're ready to go out into the world, but. And then I have a list for each one of my other major parts of the process. So that's my title thumbnail, my videos that are being scripted, my videos that are being filmed, as well as you know the actual filming date for them, my editing list, my SEO list, so that's like backing up files, doing descriptions, metadata, all that jazz. All right, so going back to the content page, I have my database section, which is again, terribly uninteresting. This is just the content hub database. This is where it actually lives. And that's where all the data in everything here is backed up into and my Hi, I'm Julia page, which is actually my link in bio. I used to use an app called Milkshake, but it's a little bit slow on my phone. I'm not sure why. I might go back to using it at some point, but right now I just love how 
easy it is for me to edit Notion. I think the restriction with Milkshake is I basically had to edit it on my phone and I just find that it's very, very user friendly. So I'm gonna briefly zoom into my Twitch page because Twitch is a bit of a beast <laughs> when it comes to content planning. Now, of course, keeping track of the live streams part, that's fairly easy because I keep that in its own database. I don't like mixing it in with my YouTube videos, but I keep all sorts of stuff in here. So I keep a running list of ideas for my Twitch channel, ideas for streams that get recommended while I'm live, commands, shortcuts, any kind of quick things that I might need to access while I'm live. Social media tips, which is actually one of the point rewards that I have on my channel. So if you earn a certain amount of points from watching my stream, you can basically ask me a question about marketing or social media and I will answer it during the live stream. Kind of fun, but I like to keep those sort of back burner ideas in their own folder, emotes, overlays, and then anything that I learn about Twitch that is just fun or interesting kind of goes into that folder and I love it. So these two pages, I need to figure out what I'm doing with them. Late Night Mission is just one of my Call of Duty streams that I did and then Twitch streams is another database that I'm working on cleaning up right now. As you can see, it's a little bit of a mess, but this does link to my game libraries folder, which is quite cool. I think that is a very nifty part of it and it helps me find the actual project files much, much quicker because I have this. But back to my main content though, there are two other pages that I keep outside of my content hub. And those are my content tools and my content growth pages. My content tools are the things that I need to reference that don't necessarily have to do with a specific video. The final thing I really want to talk about is my content tools and my content growth pages. The last thing I want to talk about are my content tools and my content growth pages. Content tools is this fun mini little database where I keep resources or things that I come across on my YouTube journey. So for example, my YouTube page has stuff on scripting, stuff on workflows, planning, products, just any kind of resources that I stumble across that I tend to reference. And whenever there's a new area of content creation that I wanna learn about, I will usually just create a page in here dump in any resources, TikTok links, whatever it may be, and use it while I am going through the content creation process. I also have my TikTok trends page linked in here and my sponsors page, which is just a list of potential companies that I might wanna work with in the future. The other one is insanely basic. It is just a really cut and dry. Each content platform that I manage gets its own growth page and I have a reminder set on each one of what day I need to go in and do my recap from the previous month. I can see how much money I made from my videos, how long people watch them for, and just anything else that I really might wanna track here. And there you have it, my entire Notion workflow. I realize it seems a little bit tough to approach, so I will do my best to have a template down below for you guys to borrow from. See if it works for you. Again, I've gotten my Notion template from a huge mix of resources and it is very much a work in progress. I don't think my content database is ever gonna be like done, cut and dry. I'm never changing this again because the reality is every social media platform is constantly changing. There's no guarantee that it'll be the same way on one day as it will be the other. And that's just something we gotta live with as us content creators. We gotta stick together. So <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely check out some of my other resources on content creation. I will link them right over here if you guys wanna go watch those. And in the comments down below, I wanna hear what are you guys doing to stay productive and on top of your content right now? Because I'm always open to new ideas. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see your beautiful faces in the next one. Bye lovelies.